Hello and uh, welcome to this tutorial. Um, today I'm going to show you how the uh, texture application tool works. You see the button right there, just click that to get this face edit sheet up. I'm going to go through what's in the material tab right here. If you want to see uh, a tutorial on the displacement tab, you can uh, click a link right here to check that out because I've already made a tutorial on that. But today we're going to focus on the material tab. So let's start out with the basics. If you have this tool selected, you can left click to select faces uh, on your brushes. If you hold control, you can add to your selection. If you hold shift, you can select all the faces on the brush you click on. So you, if you want to select all the faces on a brush, you will not have to go out, click on the brush and then go back into the face edit sheet tool application texture thingy uh, but you can just left click and you can of course hold both control and shift to um, select to add uh, brushes to your selection okay and you can also if you have a um, if you have a brush selected uh, you can right click on another brush to apply the texture uh, you can actually select another texture as well and just right click somewhere to apply it so that's a quick way to apply textures and uh, let's start out in the top left corner here. We have the texture scale and the texture shift uh, options here. The texture scale is pretty basic. Uh, it changes the scale of the texture. Now it's 0 0.25. If, if I wanted it to be twice as big on the x-axis, I would change that to 0 0.5. If I wanted it to be twice as big on the y-axis as well, I would change that to 0 0.5 as well. And so on and so forth. Uh, so on and so forth. It's pretty, pretty basic. Okay, and uh, then we have the texture shift uh, property right here that you use to control um, just the shifting of the texture. You can displace it or however you say. Uh, just shift it. It's pretty basic, pretty useful in some cases if you want to align the textures. Uh, we have the light map scale right here. It's defaulted to 16, but uh, I have made a tutorial on what that's about and how it works, so link right here. And same goes for the smoothing groups button, I made a tutorial on that as well. Link right here and link down below as well. Okay, but the lightning scale, another tutorial, click link uh, if you want to check that out. Then we have the rotation right here, just select your face and you rotate it with using this one. Also pretty basic, and uh, here we have the justify options. Let's say, let's change to the texture here so it's easier to see. So now we have, have a window. Let's say I wanted the left edge of this texture. I think that's around here somewhere. To align with the left edge of our brush, I would hit the L button for left. This aligns the left edge of the texture with the left edge of the brush. Okay, let's say I want the right edge of the texture to align with the right side of the brush. Right here, the right edge of the face, I should say. Okay, there we go. Now the right edge of the texture is aligned with the right edge of the face. And uh, the same goes for the top and bottom, the T and B, top and bottom, and all and L and R, left and right, these four work all the same. Um, but since the top edge of my texture already is aligned with the uh, top edge of the face, and same goes for the bottom edge, the top and bottom button won't do anything. And then we have the C button here, that stands for center, to center the texture. That's also very useful. And um, then we have the fit button right there that tries to fit the texture into the uh, selected face. Now another thing you can do um, is use the treat as one button there. So if we select that one uh, and select several faces, let's apply that texture there. And there actually. We can uh, now, for example, align it to the left, and uh, it'll try kind of to align other textures properly, though it kind of works here, but over here it starts getting weird, so we'll go into um, in more detail how to fix stuff like that later. And we can also try to center it, and that worked a bit better. Uh, it, what, it, what the Traders 1 button basically does is in, it tries to make it so that uh, it uses all of these three as a single one instead of having, for example, if we 
uncheck 3D1 and select center again, it'll center them individually on each face. And that works with all of these tools right here. And uh, then we have the, of course, texture drop down menu right here. Let's just re reset those. And you can use this to select a texture. Uh, I use this mostly for selecting a recent texture because at the top here, as you can see, I have a few textures up to this divider here. Uh, these are the textures that I have recently used, so that's what I use this for. If I want to browse for a specific texture, I always hit the browse button right there. And this will bring up this little browse texture dialog which where you can search and stuff. You probably know about that already. Okay. And uh, then we have the uh, these two align buttons. We can align it to either world or face, and this decides whether it uh, uses world coordinates or face coordinates when doing uh, all of the, these texture shifting stuff, basically. Mostly the texture shifting stuff. It's very hard to describe how this works. I'm not even sure I know myself exactly how it works, but sometimes you want world, sometimes you want face. If it's not working out for you, you might want to just play around with this or something, I don't know. Uh, okay, so then we have the mode here. Uh, there are a bunch of different modes. I've al almost never ever in my entire life used these, since there are like shortcuts for almost every single one of them, or they're just not very useful. Okay, so first we have the lift plus select. To lift a texture means to have it selected, to select the actual face. To select a face is to lift the texture. I think, let's see. No, let's see. To select is, of course, to select. To lift is to take the texture from the face you click. So with the lift plus select, it will select the face. It becomes red, as you can see. And it br takes the texture into the um, texture application tool as well. But if I change that to lift only, it'll it just uh, lift the uh, texture from the face. As you can see, it doesn't select anything, it just takes the texture. And then if I change it to select, it will not take the texture from the face, it will just select the face. Okay, and then we have the apply. That will be a, like right clicking usually. You just apply the currently selected texture right here and uh, apply texture plus values. Actually, this one is like a right click. When you right click, you apply both the uh, texture itself and if you have a face selected that has different settings uh, right here uh, or in the texture shift or lighten up scale or rotation or anything, it will apply those as well. And uh, that's basically, yeah, this setting. So if I change the texture scale to 0 0.1 there, you can see the texture will be kind of squished and weird. So that's what that does. And then we have the align to view, which is weird. That's crazy. It's like projecting the texture of the face you're clicking from the view. Uh, I'm going to try this on this wall here. Let's see this wall actually. So I just click this wall and it kind of stretches the texture as, it, as if it was projected from the camera. It's a very weird thing, I've never used this before myself, but um, I don't know, it's kind of cool. Uh, and I guess you can use it to get some cool effects or something. I read that you can use this for, for example, if you're making irregular or organic shapes, where the texture you easily get stretched, especially if you're using the Align to World checkbox. Perhaps you can use this to just align the textures quickly and easily. Okay, but don't forget to change this back so you don't get confused. I've always ever in my entire life only used the lift plus select uh, uh, mode here. And then we have the smoothing groups. As I've said, I made a tutorial on that, so click right here for that tutorial. Uh, I have a link below as well. Then we have this hide mask here. Uh, I've used this sometimes, but I think I've mostly used it when doing displacement stuff, so I'm not sure how useful this is. This means that even though something is selected, it'll just hide the actual selection view, so you can't see that it's selected. It can be good if you're making color sensitive work, or you know, if you just think that these masks are in the way. Though the browser is useful, we have the replace, which is a very useful tool uh, from time to time. 
You can use this to replace all textures of the same sort. So let's say I don't like this brick texture here. I can just click the replace. And then uh, this is the current texture. This is the texture in the level that I want to replace. It's just the currently selected one. And here I can click browse and find another texture that I want to replace it with. So let's say I like this uh, other texture here a little more. So I select that one, just double click and it's selected. And then you have a bunch of options if you want to uh, do it for hidden objects too. Your, uh, replace exact, partial substitute, partial matches. Do not replace textures, mark found solids. This is very useful if you want to mark every single face with the, this texture on it. You can do that if you select that one and uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff. So if I click OK, it will replace 24 textures. That's all of those. And uh, there you go. They are now replaced. And uh, then we have some actually very, very useful stuff we can do here. If you, let's change that back, Control Z. Okay, so I have this texture selected. Uh, actually not. Let's see, just see this, this um, kind of seam here. Maybe I don't want that seam, obviously. That's kind of weird. So what I can do to fix that is I select this face the face that I want to be, the face that everything is aligned to. And then I hold ALT and... oops. And I don't click W because that will bring up the window uh, menu there. Okay, so I hold ALT and right click on that texture. Now you see it's perfectly aligned, it's almost impossible to see the seam there. I don't think you can at all actually. And then I have a seam here so I just keep going, ALT right click, select ALT right click. You might be able to... No, that doesn't work. You need to select the face that's next to it. And this is useful, for example, if you're doing roads and stuff, because you can do this up as well. So you see this one is kind of straight here. I want this to go round here, obviously, if this is supposed to be shown. So what I can do is select this one, hold Alt, right click, select this one, Alt, right click, this one, Alt, right click. And you see it kind of aligns the texture very nicely. And this is useful if you're making, as I said, for example, roads and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it's just a very cool and easy way to to align stuff. You can you just be creative with it. For example, if I'm making like a support beam, let's say I'm making a support beam here with this texture for some reason. Okay, so let's just quickly make a beam. Oops, that's not a beam. That's like a round thing. Okay, never forget to change to block there. We have the beam there and. Uh, where is it? It's over there. Okay. So we have the beam. The beam. And uh, let's just skew this a little bit. I'm just going to click it, click it, and make it like that. Okay, so we have a support beam holding up the roof here. And it looks obviously not perfect here. As you can see, it just up, up, it goes up like that, but we want it to like align with everything else. So we just select this one, hold Alt, right click. You see, it's perfect. It just fits uh, amazingly. And then we do the same thing here. And uh, there you go. It's amazing. So uh, just be creative. It will be very useful. And uh, using uh, these tools right here will also be very useful for you to just keep everything... Um, just use the tools you have to do things quickly because before I used to like do calculations in calc to try to do this stuff before I knew you could just select one and uh, hold alt and right click and it, it works. So I hope this has uh, given you some kind of uh, help with the, the tools. Some of these things are far from obvious and it took me several years before I found out some of these things. So I hope this was useful to you and that you'll be making some awesome maps with it in the future. So yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, if you want to, you can subscribe and you know give me a thumbs up if you like this tutorial, and uh, I'll see you some other time. Okay, bye-bye.